Hi, my name is Kristen Lafferty from Ohio Health Sports Medicine and Primary Care. This is part of the Family Medicine Radiology Education Series. I will be talking about bone lesions today and I have no disclosures regarding this topic. Objectives for this lecture will be to learn a systematic approach to differentiating benign bone lesions from malignant bone lesions. We will review three common benign adult lesions and then go over three common malignant adult lesions. Important factors when it comes to differentiating bone lesions includes patient age, uh, location of the lesion, margins of the lesion, including something called zone of transition, which we will go over, um, the appearance of periosteal reaction, the matrix or mineralization of the actual lesion itself, size and number of lesions, and then the presence of any soft tissue components. So age is really important. And we look at this graphic, we see that blue is benign and red is malignant. And most lesions under the age of 30 tend to be benign, which is always great. Um, the two more common malignant lesions, as you can see, are Ewing sarcoma and osteosarcoma in the youth. And then really after the age of 30, um, any bone lesions that tend to pop up have a higher risk of malignancy. Um, so you can see the red bar is kind of after the age of 30. Um, a little more conspicuous than all the blue that we had seen before the age of 30. So just remember that age does help us differentiate between benign and malignant bone lesions. Another thing that helps us decide radiographically between benign and malignant lesion is something called zone of transition. And that really is, you know, where does the lesion start and end and can we differentiate um, normal bone from the lesion? So a smaller narrow zone of transition is usually considered a um, benign characteristic. So if you look at the radiographic on the left, you can see a bone lesion, pick it out really well, you know, where normal bone starts and ends and where the lesion starts and ends versus looking at the uh, radiographic on the right side of more malignant lesions, it's really hard to tell exactly where the lesion is. Um, obviously you can tell that the bone doesn't look normal, but you really can't tell where the transition of, you know, normal bone to lesion starts and ends. Another important feature is something called periosteal reaction. Um, periosteal reaction can be normal in some sort of pathologies, such as stress fractures or fractures when the bone starts to kind of lamellate and grow back. Um, so a solid and uh, lamellated, um, you know, periosteal reactions could be indications of something benign versus obviously when associated with a obvious lesion and more speculated or showing something like a Codman triangle kind of periosteal reaction is indicative of something malignant. Um, and you'll see things like that in Ewing sarcoma and um, osteosarcoma. So take close attention to things like periosteal reaction because it can help you differentiate from uh, between benign and malignant. So you can see there are a whole bunch of different benign bone lesions, but the three that we will review today are non-ossifying fibromas, unicameral or simple bone cyst, and osteochondromas. So starting with a non-ossifying fibroma, we will always start out with a little bit of background or patient presentation. So generally these are seen in older kids or adolescents, um, more often as an incidental finding on a radiograph or something else, maybe say an injury or so. Um, occasionally folks will have a little bit of extremity pain and then the most common location for non-ossifying fibromas is in the lower extremities. Radiographic image findings usually consist of something um, that we call a multi-loculated radiolucent lesion with a bubbly appearance. So radiolucent means it's literally lucent. It will sort of appear black in the bulk of the lesion on x-ray. Um, and generally these are surrounded by a nice sclerotic rim. Again, that kind of gives us a narrow or small zone of transition. So you can tell where the lesion is, uh, where, where bone basically turns into lesion. In location, these are generally eccentric, meaning that they are right up against the cortex of the bone and metaphyseal in the long bone. So not at the growth plate, um, not necessarily directly in the center or diaphysis of the bone, but generally in the metaphysis. And these do not have any periosteal reactions since they are benign bone lesions. Usually um, treatment for these, especially if they're asymptomatic, is just observation. Obviously, if they're symptomatic and it's large, things like pathologic fractures could occur, so it may need some sorts of fixation, but for the most part, just observation. 
benign simple bone cysts or the second benign lesion we'll talk about. Patients are generally, again, on the younger side, so adolescents or young adults, generally asymptomatic. Some folks may have pain if they are larger lesions. And the most common location for your simple bone cyst is actually in the humerus. Radiographic image findings um, or contain well-defined borders, generally a centralized location within the bone. And these are also lytic lesions. So again, kind of that, um, I guess, grayer or darker appearance, you can kind of see through, not as um, made of normal speculated uh, sclerotic lines as normal bone. Um, these do not usually have as well-defined sclerotic borders, such as you see in the non-ossifying fibromas, but again, uh, benign appearance, no periosteal reaction or any kinds of, um, you know, mixed lytics and sclerotic kinds of lesions. It's a kind of got that bubbly appearance again, which is usually benign. Generally for treatment, these decrease in size and heal with maturity or growth arrests are usually no major treatments necessary. If they are large and painful, they can be surgically debrided. Okay, the last benign bone lesion we'll talk about is an osteochondroma. Patients, again, are usually adolescents or young adults, may have pain at the area of the chondral surface, especially if these are larger. Um, radiographic findings consist of sessile or pedunculated polyp-like lesions. Um, they're contiguous with the native cortex of the bone, so no real separation. Um, and of course, you can usually see these on x-ray, but because they do have a cartilage cat, they may be better seen with MRI. So if you see one and a patient has a tremendous amount of pain or you're considering something surgical, an MRI is a good idea um, to better characterize size and uh, location of a lesion for surgical planning. For the most part, you can just observe if there's no pain. Obviously, if there is pain, you can refer. Um, there are several different malignant bone lesions, but the three that we will focus on today are metastases, myeloma, and osteosarcoma. So starting with metastases, again, patients are generally a bit older, average age usually older than 40, may have systemic symptoms such as fevers, chills, night sweats, and often folks with metastatic um, cancer will have bone pain and nighttime pain. Image findings may consist of lytic or a mixed lytic and blastic kinds of lesions, often um, with erosion through the normal cortex and some periosteal reaction, as you can see here in uh, this picture. Obviously, treatment will depend on primary um, and you know, individual patient characteristics. For myeloma, average patient age or median age is usually 60, so a little bit older. Um, malignant myeloma is more common in males and black individuals. And when we're talking about signs and symptoms, don't forget your crab mnemonic. So um, may see hypercalcemia, renal dysfunction, anemia, and then obviously your pain um, and bone lesions. Image findings usually consist of punched out or lytic lesions. There's really no sclerotic borders in myeloma. Um, so kind of a very, I would say almost like a bland looking lesion, but there's really no specific borders around it. It's just really very much lytic. Again, treatment kind of varies too based on the individual, but there could be chemotherapeutics. Um, for big lesions with pathologic fractures, it could be uh, surgical uh, means necessary. And so it, it depends from patient to patient. For osteosarcomas, generally these occur in younger individuals, so children or young adults. Symptoms may include pain, fever, chills, swelling of the region or joint that's affected. And image findings in osteosarcoma on plain radiographs include a blastic kind of a lesion. So may have some more bone actually put down within the lesion itself. Usually they do have large periosteal reactions. So that's when we see things like the sunburst pattern or Codman's triangle. And this um, radiograph here actually does show a Codman's triangle pretty well. The lesion kind of lifts off the native cortex of the bone on that lateral surface and creates a, you know, basically a triangular shape for the cortex. Oftentimes osteosarcomas are fairly aggressive and can penetrate through soft tissues. So MRIs may be helpful um, to further understand how much of the soft tissue is affected. And again, treatment depends on individual components. Um, you know, they could be resective, but they are quite um, aggressive. And so lots of chemotherapeutics are likely to be involved. So when it comes to bone lesions, the most 
useful radiograph um, or sorry exam is actually plain radiographs for helping to differentiate uh, benign from malignant lesions. MRIs and CT scans may be helpful in specific cases or if you're planning malignant staging or a surgical, um, a surgical procedure. So kind of in review here, at least in terms of age, less than 30 years of age, more common are benign lesions. The two malignant lesions are usually Hewing sarcoma and osteosarcoma. Otherwise, the remainder of them tend to be um, lytic lesions with sclerotic borders, no periosteal reaction, and no other uh, concerning malignant signs such as um, evasion into soft tissues or uh, cortical erosions. Whereas we kind of flip over to the right side, greater than 30 years, we have to start thinking about more malignant lesions if they kind of pop up incidentally. Um, those may consist of metastases, myeloma, lymphoma, chondrosarcoma. So just kind of be aware that age plays a, a big factor. And then in total summary, um, I would like to just say that you know, if you see a finding on an x-ray and a patient has pain over that region, even if it's a benign lesion, you may want to recommend further consultation because, you know, lesions that are big can cause bony injury and pathologic kinds of fractures. So if there is pain with an obvious radiographic lesion, consider further consultation. And then in summary, the characteristics of benign lesions include well-defined borders, narrow zones of transition, little or no periosteal reaction, and no soft tissue invasion. Whereas characteristics of malignant lesions can include ill-defined borders, wide zones of transition, periosteal reaction, and then of course may invade into soft tissues. And that's it.